So there's a very systematic change in the characteristic of a turbidite uh, as, as you move down the flow. Okay. So on this upper end, down to about here, you first have erosion. So we'll start uh, downstream of, of our landslide here because you'd end up with a fault uh, there. So you often have erosion here, but when the flow slows down enough, um, you, you lose that erosion and you just accumulate sediment. So not all turbidites have that erosional base. So as the flow slows down here, you may get a little bit of sediment um, uh, deposited uh, from at, at various times. So let's say about here you start getting the Bauma A facies, and you might end up with a layer of the Bauma A that's distributed something like this. Up here, maybe the slope is, is uh, too steep to really accumulate that first bit of sandstone. And as the flow extends further and further out on the slope, um, it's slowing down, and the flow speed never might never have been fast enough uh, to deposit the, 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 the base the, of the turbidite in the ideal Balma sequence. Once the flow slows down a little bit, you end up with the planar lamination as a symbol like this. And that's likely to go out a little farther uh, than um, uh, the, the A component. So this one is maybe B. And then you start getting the ripples. So this is a symbol for ripples. And those are likely to stand, extend even further down slope because they form up at lower flow speeds. And then eventually you get the, so that's C, Balma C, and then eventually you get the siltstone on top. And I already drew it a little bit wrong because usually the siltstone, there's enough in the water that it, it often uh, extends over um, the whole area maybe even into the area where you have um, the landslide, because a lot of it is suspended sediment. So we'll put the B here, the C here, and this is the Balma B. And it may or may not be uh, thicker. And then finally you end up with the mudstone draping and settling out over everywhere in the ocean. Which is the Bauma E. There. Okay. So depending on where you are relative to the, the slope failure and how the, the topography of the ocean basin um, uh, changes through time, you can get a different set of Boma sequences. So, for example, here we have erosion, an erosional surface, and then we have D and E, right, with our finding grain sizes. Here, in this zone here, we have the full Boma sequence, A, B, C, D, and E. Out here, we're missing, we just have the C, D, and E. So this is A through E in here. Okay. 
Okay, and then this one is just D and E, right? So this is, uh, so you, you get this variation in turbidites depending on their location relative uh, to the turbidity current and the dynamics of its change. You know, one of the things that commonly happens is you often get uh, turbidites one on top of another, and sometimes during this erosion phase, for example, they are eroding a previous turbidite deposit. So you can even have additional complications in that you can have erosion of one turbidite and cut off upper parts of the turbidite um, sequence itself, the Bauma sequence. So you can be, you can actually say be missing the E, the, the mudstone that accumulates between turbidity currents, even if there's a big gap in time between one turbidity flow and the next, it's just that a record of that interval of time has been removed by erosion under the next uh, turbidite. Uh, so there, there are a couple of things that I want, uh, the key points um, that I want you to take away. One of which is that we have this great um, ideal sequence of facies within a turbidite that capture the dynamics of the flow, but whether but how they're preserved in the rock record depends a great deal on the details of the, the turbidity current itself, where you're looking relative to that current, and what's the subsequent history, in particular the erosion from them. So there's a huge amount of information that can be pulled out of the rocks by recognizing these components of turbidites, labeling them as the facies, and interpreting the processes that led to their deposition. Thanks for watching.